All right, welcome to your screencast on Investigation 11B about tornadoes. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit, but I would like to read the introduction to you, and I hope you follow along, um, because tornadoes are extremely interesting, as you guys probably imagine. Um, so here we go. A tornado can be the most intensely violent weather on Earth. Its extreme winds can take lives and cause considerable property damage. Wind speeds in a tornado, estimated from the extent of property damage, is the basis for rating these systems, the tornado systems, from zero, which is weakest, to five, which is strongest, on the enhanced Fujita scale, the EF scale. Um, this was named for Dr. Theodore Fujita of the University of Chicago, who developed the scale in 1971. Okay, skipping down a little bit. Most tornadoes are spawned by and travel with severe thunderstorms. I would highlight that sentence. That's really important. Okay. Um, then the last sentence, it says, the special weather pattern required for tornadic thunderstorms to develop is most common in spring and summer in the central United States. That includes uh, us here in central Texas. All right. Um, let's skip down, and it says, after completing the investigation, you should be able to list some of the characteristics of the path of an intense tornado, describe the general weather conditions favorable for the formation of tornadic thunderstorms, and explain why winds on one side of the tornado may be stronger than winds on the other side. Okay, skipping down to the introduction. Um... The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association's Storm Prediction Center, SPC, is um, those are the ones that provide severe thunderstorm and tornado watches for the contiguous United States, meaning the 48 states that are attached. A severe weather watch, for example, a thunderstorm watch or a tornado watch, is issued when meteorological conditions are favorable for that weather situation to occur. Please highlight that sentence, the one that says a severe weather watch, for instance, a thunderstorm or tornado watch, is issued when me meteorological conditions are favorable for that weather situation to occur. Um, if somebody issues a warning, it's typically the local National Weather Service office, so that's a bit different. But anyway, and remember, um, and you might want to write this in, actually I do want you to write this in, that a warning means that that weather is either happening already or it's imminent, which means it's right about to happen, okay? All right, so we're going to walk through this and look at some different graphics. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to read. So you'll need to be listening because I'm going to be reading from right here, but I'm actually going to go ahead and put figure one up so that you can see what I'm talking about as I read um, so that you can kind of follow along that way. All right, so it's figure one from the Storm Prediction Center shows the monthly totals of April tornadoes from 1950 when reliable numbers became available to the present. And this was made in like 2011 or so, so it's a couple years old. The spring month of April is traditionally among the most actives, uh, most active tornado months, with May typically being the peak of the U.S. tornado season. As storm systems become energized with contrasts of li lingering winter cold and invading spring warmth, clashing during thunderstorm formation, accompanying, accompanying multi mid latitude, excuse me, cyclones. Okay. Okay, so what they're saying is April and May, you've got the last of the winter cold air and it's clashing with nice warm air and so you're getting a lot of energy for thunderstorm formation in, in those time frames. Let's look at the um, graph, title April tornadoes, monthly totals from 1950 to 2010 and we've got a kind of a pale blue right here and it's very hard to read, but it says long-term average right here, okay? I think it says 176 or something like that for April, okay? So that's your long-term average. This green line is labeled linear trend, which means 
that if you look at it over time, in general, the number of tornadoes in April is increasing over time slowly. Okay, Then you've got the red line. So this is your uh, 1950s decade with an average of 74 tornadoes in April, uh, 1960s decade with an average of 95 tornadoes, uh, your 1970s decade with an average of 124 tornadoes. Okay, and you notice right here um, the decadal average, meaning the average over the decade of the 1970s, is 124 and it's a little bit higher and a lot of that is because of this crazy season we had in 1974. So that threw the whole average for the decade um, off. And then we've got the average for the 1980s, 99 in April, average for the 1990s, average for the early 2000s. Okay, so that's in red. Uh, and then we have this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, this is your year by year plot okay of what we've had okay and you notice we had a lot of tornado outbreaks that looks like it might be 1957 um, and then this one is the big tornado outbreak that we had in 1974 you know over here in 1987 we had virtually none that kind of thing so that's how you read this graph all right let's look at question number one the 1974 outbreak along with additional tornadoes that month, brought the greatest number of tornadoes reported in April that year to what number? Well, here's 1974. Go up, 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 and it's way up here, and it even tells you 267 tornadoes in April of that one year. Okay? And for the rest of number one, it says that single year drove the 1970s decadal average to 124. Okay, so 267 tornadoes in April of 1974. That's a lot. Number two, overall the decadal average, the averages for the entire decades, have been increasing with the exception of the 1980s. The green line shows the linear trend of tornado numbers implying that April 2011 would be expected to have about, well, how many? Okay, so if we're looking at April 2011 and we're looking at the linear trend, which is the average over time, then we could expect in 2011 to have about this many tornadoes. Well, we go straight across and we read, and that's going to make us hit over here at about 170 tornadoes. Okay? The increasing numbers of tornadoes being reported as noted in the figure text, likely implies greater population density, meaning there's more people, combined with the ubiquity of personal communications, meaning that everybody has a little personal device or a cell phone, can text message, things like that. So things are probably, it's not necessarily that we're getting more tornadoes, but we're getting uh, the tornadoes that do occur reported on a more regular basis, okay? All right, um, we're going to now move on to the little section down at the bottom and I do want to read this with you but I'm going to go ahead and stop this screencast and I will start another one where it says one severe weather outbreak. Okay, so join me for the next one.